Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a mono black aggro deck updated with M20. So let's dive right into it here. At one mana we've got four different one mana creatures. We've got four copies of Diagraph Ghoul, which is a 2-2 that enters the battlefield tapped. We've got four Gutter Bones, a 2-1 that enters the battlefield tapped. And for two mana we can return from the graveyard to our hand if our opponent lost life. And then we've got Knight of the Abon Legion as a big addition from M20 as a 1-2 that we can pump up for three mana, giving it plus three plus three and death touch until end of turn. And also gets a plus one plus one counter end of turn if our opponent lost four or more life this turn. Also counts if we lost four or more life during our turn, but I don't think we have a way of uh, achieving that unless we had four copies of Spawn of Mayhem in play, which is unlikely to happen. And then we also have four copies of Vicious Conquistador as a 1-2 that can also make the opponent lose a life if we attack, so great at enabling Spectacle. And we do have some Spectacle cards in this deck besides Spawn of Mayhem. We've got the full four copies of Drillbit, which has a Spectacle cost of just a single black, so for one mana we can cast a Drillbit if the opponent lost life this turn, take a look at their hand and take any non-land card from it. So it gives us a nice bit of hand disruption, maybe taking away a key removal spell or sweeper to disrupt the opponent's game plan. And then another addition from M20 is this figure as a nice cheap removal spell for 1 mana, giving a creature minus 2, minus 2 until end of turn. And I slightly prefer this over Deadweight, which is a permanent minus 2, minus 2, but the instant speed is useful, letting us take out a flash creature before it can block. We can use it as a combo trick that the opponent might not expect, and of course we can cast it in the opponent's turn as well, to maybe use our mana more efficiently. Then at 2 mana we've got 4 copies of Graveyard Marshal as our only creature, the 2-drops are a bit lacking in mono black, so we don't have the best selection of 2-drop creatures, but the Graveyard Marshal is still pretty good, 2 mana for a 3-2, and also gives us a mana sink for 3 mana, exiling a creature from our graveyard to make a 2-2 zombie token. So once the dust settles, if our creature is traded off early, then the Graveyard Marshal can generate a whole new army of zombie tokens. And then we've got a bunch more removal at 2 mana, 2 copies of Cast Down to destroy non-legendary creature density speed, 2 copies of Legion's End, which is great against tokens, especially against the Scapeshift deck, being able to sweep up a whole bunch of zombie tokens from the opponent and keep attacking is pretty big and every now and then you can snipe multiple creatures out of the opponent's hand after exiling one in play and the exile part can also be relevant against indestructible creatures like a of vanguard although they also die to the minus two minus two from this figure and finally also two copies of walk the plank to destroy target non morpho creature can maybe take out a lyra dawnbringer that the uh, cast down cannot deal with so it still has a bit of upside even though it's a sorcery and then our big heavy hitters here at the top of our curve are four copies of Rotting Regisaur, another big addition from M20. Usually our hand is pretty empty by the time we cast Regisaur, so the drawback of having to discard a card is not too bad. And of course we get a 3 mana 7-6 which beats down very hard and can close out the game very quickly. And then our final card is Spawn of Mayhem which we can also spectacle for 3 mana, making a 4-4 with Flying and Trample. And at the beginning of our upkeep, Spawn of Mayhem deals 1 damage to each player. And then if we have 10 or less life we also get to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the spawn of mayhem to start making it even bigger and then our mana base a very simple 20 beautiful basic swamps so yeah that's the deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does all right we're on the play with a decent hand one drop double one drop and a cast down as a bit of removal and then gutter bones maybe coming back from the graveyard i think i'll lead with the gutter bones if they kill it, we're less upset than if they kill the Diagraph Ghoul. Eh, looks like they might have a shock here. Eh, just a Firebrand. Firebrand is a reason to potentially still play the Ghoul, since that one we can attack past. So let's get in there. And then just play Gutter Bones plus Ghoul. The Mono Red matchup should be relatively close. We've got similar game plans. If we can get a Spawn of Mayhem or a Rotting Regisaur down, the opponent could struggle with those. Decides to hang back with the Firebrand, fair enough. I think we're still playing both here. But of course, upside of the Red Burn spells, besides killing our creatures, is that they can also go upstairs. Whereas our removal will be stranded in hands. We've got the Spawn of Mayhem in hand. Hopefully we can leverage that to some success. Hmm. 
Alright, just killing all our creatures, I see how it is. Well, it's gonna make it difficult to play Spawn Mayhem next turn, or to get back Gutter Bones from the graveyard. Guess we'll play a drill bit in the meantime. Alright, well, that's all the burn spells. The interesting thing here is, they can cast Double Shock to kill Spawn of Mayhem. They need 4 mana to cast Wizard's Lining plus Shock. So it could actually be better to take the Shock over the Wizard's Lining here, even though Lightning deals one more damage. If they had a Wizard, of course, it would be a different story. Alright, light up the stage, finds a Wizard and another Wizard. Lots of Wizards, and yeah. Just gotta have to say go here. So not ideal. So I could cast down the Paramancer, but I would rather cast down the Lava Runner here. Which I'm sure they'll play. So now they get access to both 1 mana burn spells essentially to take out the Spawn of Mayhem. And they have 4 mana, so even if we kill the Paramancer with the Walk the Plank, they'll still be able to kill the Spawn of Mayhem, but I think it's still the play here. Make him use the burn spells, take 2 from Paramancer. Alternatively, I can Walk the Plank Paramancer first. And then wait a turn on the spawn, I guess that's also reasonable. Reason to hold it is if they draw something like a Steamkin or a Goblin Chain Whirler. But I can buy casting Walk the Plank here. Small chance they fire off the Wizard's Lining on our face and then the Spawn of Mayhem gets to live, but more likely that they just hold on to it. Alright, opponent with just another land. Alright, Knight of Ebon Legion is a good one. So if we play the Knight, I could just pass a turn. And then I kind of force them to either keep up their mana or use both burn spells, since I could pump in a response to a single burn spell. I think I kind of like playing Knight here. Because if I play Spawn, they just double burn it, which, I mean, isn't bad for us. But I think this might be a little bit better. And I'm not forced to pump, since by just attacking with a one-powered Knight, I also threaten to get back Gutter Bones. So they'll be kind of forced to kill it anyway, one way or the other. Unless they top deck something that changes their plan. We'll see how this plays out. We just traded a bunch of resources so far. And we still have one of our heavy hitters in hand. It does deal one damage to us as well. So if we get low on life, it could turn into a drawback. All right, opponent's going to bite a bullet here. And just use both burn spells. And now Spawn of Mayhem is pretty likely to stick around. Which is good. Just a land for the opponents. And Spawn of Mayhem also a great spectacle enabler. Can make it easy to get back gutter bones. So now we're in business. Let's attack for four. Get back gutter bones, play Graveyard Marshal. And yeah, opponent explodes, so they drew a couple too many lands perhaps, but so it goes. It looks like we get a rematch. So this hand, if we know for a fact we're up against Monorad, is actually not terrible in that we have double this figure as early interaction. We're missing a couple lands, of course, but I think I'm keeping. Usually one of the ways we lose with the deck is if we start flooding out, so having a mana light hand is better than having a hand with a few too many lands. The red deck usually trades a lot of resources, so just having a hand with a lot of uh, action isn't bad. Alright, there's a Lava Runner, which I'm happy to disfigure. Prevent any Wizard's Lightnings for one mana, prevent any Spectacle cards. If I didn't have a backup disfigure, that would be a bit more questionable, since then we wouldn't have an answer for Steamkin. It's gonna be a Lightning Strike on the Knights, and a second land. So I could play Graveyard Marshal, I wouldn't be able to activate it right away. 
So I kind of like Conquistador plus keep up this figure a little bit more. And then wait on the Graveyard Marshal until maybe the opponent's out of burn spells. It's going to be interesting if we draw third land, what our play is going to be. Chain Whirler. For now, I'm probably just going to walk the plank that. Could also attack and disfigure. I guess it's reasonable attack if they block this figure and then play a Graveyard Marshal. If they take it, then probably just going to cast Walk the Plank. And that's one of the upsides of this figure over something like uh, Deadweight, is that the instant speed can kind of catch the opponent of guard sometimes. Alright, Lightning and the Marshal. Alright, great, so now we get to play Spawn of Mayhem before routing Regisaur. There's a Steamkin into Firebrand. Alright, happy to walk the plank, the Steamkin. And then Regisaur is going to be one of our last plays. And it's pretty challenging for the Mono Red deck to beat the Rotting Regisaur when they don't have a ton of cards in hand, because they need multiple burn spells to get rid of it. Pyromancer puts us to 16, and a light of the stage finds Shock and Mountain. And Shock's a Conquistador before we can attack with it. Alright, Gutter Bones, not too sad if we have to discard that to the Rotting Regisaur. Soul Attack, I'm okay with the trade. Since it also clears a path for the Rotting Regisaur. Firebrand is pretty good at blocking Regisaur for a turn. And our point explodes. Alright, so beat Monora twice. I think the matchup is close, but we got some pretty good draws this time. Alright, we're on the play. Our hand's not amazing, a bit threat light with only two Diagraph Ghouls. And if we draw fourth land, then we could start uh, flooding out. But I don't think we can mulligan either. We've got the Legions and if we're up against the uh, Shift deck. Cast down for something big, like I guess Hydroid Crisis out of the Scapeshift deck. Or just some other big creature. We'll see. Don't have the most efficient turn 2, since we don't have a third 1-drop here. So, ideal draw, probably another 1-mana play off the top, either a 1-drop creature or a Spectacle card. Is this Monorad a third time? Looks like Tin Street Dodger, so maybe this is the Cavalcade deck instead of normal Mono Red. This figure is a good pickup, so now we can attack for two, play another Ghoul and keep up this figure. Don't know if I'm disfiguring the Dodger. If they play Cavalcade, then I might disfigure it. Instigator. Alright, sadly Legion's End can only kill half of the Instigator since they don't have the same name. I guess I'll disfigure the Dodger. I've got cast down to kill the Spitfire. Of course, I could have kept this figure if they try and double block one of the ghouls. And we drew a bunch more removal. So I guess I'll just Legions and the Instigator in case I have another one in hand. And then take it from there. Alright, so they've got a war boss, Scorcher, and Cavalcade. Fair enough. So we do have the removal spells for the war boss. The tokens are gonna be a little annoying, so had we kept Legion Sand, could have maybe answered the two tokens from the Scorcher. But I wanted to have as many answers as possible to a potential Spitfire. 
So now we get to probably walk the plank. Don't think there's a drawback to cast down in this matchup. Attack for four, play Conquistador, which lines up pretty well against the 1-1s. One so this would be a great time to draw one of our heavy hitters, like Spawn of Mayhem or the Rotting Regisaur. Alright, Hasty Tin Street Donger gets in for two, essentially. And there's a spawn of mayhem, perfect. So Conquistador can enable Spectacle all by itself for the spawn. And we do have to be careful with the Scorcher, since Scorcher plus Cavalcade represents a ton of damage. So I could see the play just being a tank with only Conquistador, and then play spawn and have three creatures on defense. I could also attack with both ghouls, and then it's unlikely they chump both, and then... They could maybe trade for one ghoul, take two, or just take four, and then we still have Conquistador on defense. Maybe that's better. Because the problem with Conquistador is that they have a pretty good double block on it. So now we have two blockers back. If they play Scorcher, they've got, I think, 10 damage. So they've got six 1-1 one, one tokens that can all attack, so that's at least six damage from Cavalcade. But we've got two blockers, so we would be taking ten. Shock kills Conquistador, so now they get in for a little bit more. But now they're just dead on the way back, so I guess it works. Spawn deals one to us as well, but we should still survive. So opponent put themselves dead on board. All right, sweet. So also able to beat the Cavalcade variety. All right, opening hand seems pretty decent. Up against turn one Storm Tamers, so either mono blue or blue white flyers. We drew a drill bit, which could potentially be a one mana discard spell next turn. I do have this figure in case they attempt Curious Obsession. If they have Curious Obsession plus a dive down or spell pierce we could be in trouble so that's kind of the reason to disfigure right now but it is nice to be able to get a one drop creature in play just to enable the drill bit next turn i think i like getting the knight out there and knight of course can attack past the storm tamer whereas gutter bones might end up trading all right looks like blue white flyers and a favorable winds fair enough so now I can Disfigure plus Drillbit or Disfigure plus Gutter Bones. I guess I like Drillbit since we don't have a great answer to the Imperian Eagle, since Legion Sand doesn't kill it. So I would like to get that out of their hands if we can. Alright, so I have Eagle, Winds, and Sailor, so I'll take the Eagle, I think. They can play Second Winds and Sailor. We have Legion's Hand to deal with the Sailor. So that seems fine. And a Rustwing Falcon. Alright, so I can Legion's Hand the Falcon and then Drill Bit the Sailor. That seems reasonable. Alternatively, I could attack. If they block, of course, I can just pump the knight, which is fine. And then just play Regisaur to add some pressure to the board. But otherwise, the drill bit is going to become a dead card here if we wait. I could also attack. Uh, they take it since they don't want us to pump. And then I can play Gutter Bones and drill bit instead of using Legion Sands. Maybe that's even better. Just adding a bit more pressure to the board. And then I can decide between Regisaur or Legion Sands next turn. I guess that's reasonable. Opponent takes it. Okay, 
because we incentivized the opponent to kind of keep back the Rustwing Falcon to block, but uh, now they didn't get in any damage and we still get to Legion's End. So I'm thinking if we want to play this land, since we might want to keep it in hand for uh, discard fodder for the Regisaur, depending on what we draw next turn. So let's say Allegiance and the Falcon right now, I get in for three, hoping they don't have another Spectral Sailor. It's kind of peculiar, because it's not like the blue-white Flyers deck usually has a very high curve, so I'm trying to think what they might have in hand here, that they wouldn't have played out. Could be like a Sephara, I guess, that's stuck in their hand. So I guess we can take a look by casting the Legion's End, so we don't run into another Spectral Sailor. Alright, Spell Pierce. So yeah, that was a reason to play the land first. Alright, we'll just hang back. Another Falcon. Now they might feel comfortable attacking with the other one. Drill bit comes a bit late. Alright, I guess we can discard that to the Registrar and play out the land. Uh, Knight is still fine to attack, since if they double block we get to kill both, which seems unlikely. Alright, never mind. Seems like a good trade for us. And then, yeah, I guess I'll play out the land here. Another wins. So if our opponent draws a creature, it's going to be pretty enormous, but they'll need to draw one soon here, because this Registaur doesn't mess around. And the Knight of Ebon Legion can still trade off for any flyer, and the opponent's just dead here. They're taking 12 next turn. Not bad, not bad. Alright, so we're on the play. And yeah, opening hand seems okay. We'll need a third land for a Registaur and spawn, but I don't think we can mulligan. And I guess we'll lead with the gutter bones. Turn one islands. All right, there's a land, so we get to attack. I'm okay if they flash in a spectral sailor. Wasn't gonna use a cast down anyway. Play Conquistador. And it's gonna be an opt instead. Alright, blue black into a search for Ascanta. Alright, at least we get to get a big creature in play before a potential Crime the Carnarium comes down. So I'm tempted to play Spawn over Regisaur here, mainly because of Ritual of Soot. If her opponent plays a Ritual in two turns, the Spawn of Mayhem could survive it, whereas Regisaur does not. So let's say her opponent goes Thought Erasure into a Ritual of Soot, then at least we have the Spawn in play. Now her opponent could also play a Cast Down, which would kill this. Tyrant's Corn also doesn't kill the Spawn, whereas it does kill the Regisaur. So I think I'll play Spawn of Mayhem here. And hope they don't have a cast down. Kefnut goes to the graveyard. And if they replace Cry of the Carnarium, we at least still have one thread in play. Alright, there's a Cry. Exile is a gutter bone, so that's a pretty good answer for it. And not a register is good, so. Alright, I've got a bit of insurance against Ritual of Soots. And more big threats to add to the board. And I didn't really see a reason to play out the land. Although I'm probably gonna end up discarding the cast down anyway. So I guess we could get into a spot where I want to discard the cast down, I draw another land. I want to play the second Regisaur. And then I'll end up discarding a land instead of having an additional land in play. But I think the cast down could still have a target, like Kefnet doesn't die to it, Bones playing a control deck, so they won't have many targets for cast down, but like, I don't know, they could have Enter God Eternals, which we can kill with the cast down. So it still seems more relevant than a land at the moment. Let's get in there. I imagine they'll have removal for the Regisaur here. 
And we get to add another one to the board. Contempts. So I could cast out my own Regisaur just to not let them gain two life, but I think I would rather just play another Regisaur here. So if I had discarded the cast down, I could have played land and then played both threats here. If our opponent plays Enter God Eternals next turn, I might be happy that I kept the cast down in hand. Alright, opponent lets us on tap, so I guess I'm discarding the cast down now. Regisaur gets contempted. Hmm. So if I cast down my own Regisaur, I can put the opponent to 1. 1 is not 0. I think I'm supposed to just let this happen and play Conquistador just to have an extra threat. Well, that works. We'll play the second Spawn of Mayhem, which doesn't die to Ritual of Soot. So... Opponent's gonna need something pretty special to get out of it. Enter God Eternals, I guess, gains them enough life to stay alive. They could have two more spot removal spells, although... If they had cast them, we probably would have seen it already. And yeah, opponent just explodes, so... Some fortunate draws to uh, add more threats to the board here, but... Uh, yeah, Spawn of Mayhem and Regisaur, pretty good uh, team. Alright, so we're on the play with a reasonable hand. One drop into one drop plus drill bit, potentially. Which one drop to lead with? Think gutter bones. I regret it if they play fanatical firebrand, but for the most part, I usually prefer leading with uh, gutter bones. Just a time breeding pool, perfect. So we'll attack. Take a look with the drill bit. All right, looks like they're on blue green flash. This matchup can be okay if we just get ahead quickly. And we were on the play, we get to drill bit here, so could be winnable. So I get to play the Regisaur before they get Sabotage up. They don't have any Essence Scatters we need to worry about, but they also have two Cutthroats, so taking one maybe not super relevant, but maybe I still take the second Cutthroats and then strand them with two counter spells that don't do much. And then a Cutthroat that's going to be a lot smaller than the Regisaur and hope they don't draw into an Unsummon. Seems okay. Of course, if they draw Essence Scatter, we're going to be sad. Alright, did they draw it? So we're in pretty good shape. A 7-6 is not easy for the opponent to deal with. We've got a cast down for an eventual wolf from the opponent's. Now our opponent does have counter spells up, so I think I'm just attacking with cast down at the ready. If they flash in a Murfolk Trickster, I can potentially still respond with cast down. Opponent's just jumping. That works for me. And I'll just discard Allegiance and to the Regisaur. We don't really need to add anything else to the board here. Definitely don't want to play anything pre-combat to play into the uh, Frilled Mystic. So I'll attack, go full control just in case we need to do something. Now if they have Unsummon, then they can counter the Register on the way back. It's going to be Mystic, so we can just cast down that and they'll be dead. Alright, well. On the play makes a big difference in this matchup because that makes all the opponent's counter spells a lot less effective. And yeah, that's kind of how you have to beat the blue-green flash deck, just get on the board quickly with lots of one-drops. A little bit of disruption, insta-speed removal, also a lot better than sorcery speed removal in this matchup, being able to kill the different flash creatures before they get a chance to block. And then, yeah, if you get a register down, they have very few answers to it other than trying to block, which they're not very good at, or bouncing it with an unsummon or buying time with Merfolk Tricksters. Alright, sweet, so I think we went undefeated here with uh, Mono Black Aggro. The deck's pretty solid. 
Um, decks like Scapeshift, if we don't have an aggressive start, can potentially beat us, although the addition of Legion's End does help there. We've got the Drill Bit as a little bit of hand disruption, which helps against all the matchups. And if we play against like a dedicated control deck, sometimes we'll draw a few too many removal spells like this figure, walk the plank, legion stand and cast down, and then our hand can line up poorly. So it's definitely not a perfect deck, but if you're looking for an alternative to the other aggro decks in standard, then this might be a deck for you. There's definitely a few cards that rotate. In the upcoming rotation, Graveyard Marshal will be gone, although I don't think it's a critical part of the deck, so it's not a must-have. Uh, we lose our Graf Ghoul in the 1-drop slot and Conquistador, but maybe we'll get an additional 1-drop to replace those. That's the hope. And uh, yeah, most of the other powerful rares here, Regisaur and Mayhem, are still going to stay in standards. Knight of Abel Legion, of course, great in a lot of decks, and no difference here. So a lot of the cards stay, but uh, we'll lose a couple of the 1-drops. So if we don't get another good 1-drop for the deck, then it's probably not going to be a thing anymore. If we do get a good replacement, then I could see this deck still having a chance after rotation. Alright, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. I wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.